everyone, welcome back to part two of the working series matrix files tutorial. I will now start sharing my screen to show how we can um, start looking at this data. So where we left off, we were just about to import our data into Google Sheets. So um, I'll just show how to do it. So we went to file, um, import, and then import data. And now we're going to the upload tab and we're selecting a file from our device, so my computer. And I named it um, this. So I'm just gonna double click on the file we made in the previous video. Um, I'll create a new spreadsheet, sure. And I'll leave everything else the same. It should be able to detect the um, formatting automatically. And let's just give it a few seconds. The bigger your file, the longer it takes. So while it's running, just to refresh. Oh, never mind. Uh, it just finished. Okay. So normally, when you just download the result data set from Geo2R after analysis, we want to get a bunch of rows where each row is the gene, is a gene, and then uh, the column has information like the fold change, uh, the p value, the name of the gene, etc. So that is for when you do the Geo2R analysis. Then this is an entirely different kind of data. If you want to know more about that specifically, which is a lot easier to use for beginners, and I recommend you, you should definitely check out the free course. Uh, if you, it's at udemy.com slash gene expression, or we can go to it at helix.science slash courses. This is a, it's a great intro to what exactly is going on right now and what is gene expression and how to uh, use the online GO2R tool to perform gene expression analysis. So I'm going to really briefly go over what this uh, table is and how you can interpret it. So um, on each row, each of these row columns in the column A is a different gene, essentially, like that's being probed by the microarray. Um, this like 1294AT, 1255GAT, they're just like, like the, I guess the manufacturer names for the genes that each well on the microarray. And the columns are each a, a patient from the data set. So GSM15304 uh, would be a Parkinson's disease patient. And as you can see, there's going to be about, um, actually, I, I don't forget, maybe 100, 100 of them in this data set in total. And some of them are Parkinson's disease, some of them are healthy controls, some of them are um, neurological disease controls. And so in each um, like little bo uh, actual cell number, numerical num numer numer number, um, so that is the signal, that's the expression intensity or signal intensity for that uh, patient for this for, for the gene. And if you remember, so microarrays can't actually precisely determine the amount of RNA, uh, mRNA that there is. They can only, because when you look at microarrays, what they do is they shine like a light and, or laser and then the light goes through the, hits the fluorescent um, little tags at the end of the mRNA molecules. And then you look at the brightness. So the brightness is a, is a decent measure or indicator of how much mRNA there is, but it's not, Perfect, and you can't get an exact number. Like you can't say, okay, there were 2,500 mRNA molecule of this gene. So that's one of the weaknesses of, uh, of I guess, microarrays compared to like RNA-seq, which I think it can get you pretty accurate. Um, well, can it? Um, I'll need to check on that. But for now, um, just know that this number is not like 100, there were 114.5 mRNA molecules of this gene. So it's like a signal intensity of like how, um, how the laser like um, interacted with the probe for that patient. Um, so generally the higher the number, the greater the expression and flip reverse for lower numbers. So one thing you'll probably wanna do is you'll wanna group the Parkinson's disease and healthy controls together. Right now it's kind of like uh, split out like Parkinson's, healthy, healthy, Parkinson's, Parkinson's, neurological. You probably wanna group all the Parkinson's together So one way to do it is basically to manually drag, like you can, you can kind of um, drag this around, but it is pretty, oh, okay. So for a larger data set, it's gonna take a while to do that because um, it has to move around all this data. So actually, 
sometimes I find it easier to just um, sort the text txt file that we imported by alphabetical order when we import before we import it. That way, all the Parkinson's will be together and all the healthy controls will be together, etc. So anyway, so this kind of this kind of format, this data format, is really great for doing machine learning or more or your own or your own analysis rather than using the Geo two R tool because with the Geo two R tool you just get a bunch of <laughs> excuse me you just get a bunch of numbers out that are already pre calculated and you don't really get to like analyze it yourself. Um, so this if you're if you're interested in machine learning this is great because you can basically just feed this table into a machine learning program which we'll cover in the next video, and then from there you'd be able to say like, okay, uh, machine learning model, I want you to use uh, the, this gene, this gene, and this gene as input features for the classifier. And I want you to use this training data and figure out in the future um, what a patient, based on their gene expression values, uh, could they have Parkinson's or a neurological disease or be a control? So how that works is basically um, a machine learning model where taking all this data, you usually take a subset of it, um, but it'll take all this data and it would learn like what are the basically this is oversimplifying it but what are like the what are the common patterns of gene expression that controls have that just parkinson's people don't and like what are the unique characteristics of parkinson's like perhaps perhaps all the parkinson's people had really high levels of 107 underscore s underscore at but all the controls had really really low levels and you can already see that's not the case but um just an example so anyway the machine learning model would eventually learn that patients with uh, high levels of this are more likely to be Parkinson's disease. And it would take in all of this data, all of this style, 20, about 20,000, I think, yeah, 22,000 uh, data. Let me just clean this up. Uh, I'll just leave that. So yeah, so in the next, next month's video, I'll be covering how exactly to construct a very simple machine learning model to classify between Parkinson's disease and healthy controls. Um, before then, I would recommend watching a basic video on machine learning. I'll put some in the video description so you can get a sense about what exactly machine learning is if you aren't familiar. Um, and I definitely recommend checking out the gene expression course available at udemy.com slash gene expression because it'll help you understand like how exactly we got here because there were quite a few steps before we got to this table. Or you could check out the previous video and it should have the steps as well. Thanks for watching.